All right, guys, welcome back. And I am back too. This is Bad Senator. So I decided to take a little break in August um, to just enjoy summer. And I decided to come back because there have some, been some political happenings that have occurred since um, I've taken my August break, and I'd like to cover them. Let's start in the United States House of Representatives. Okay, so let's start in Alaska. The state of Alaska, Donald Young has moved from like solid and safe to likely a Republican. The reason for this change being that they got a good Democrat candidate out of the primary here, right? It was actually an independent. He'll appear as an independent on the ballot. And Don Young has had close races before. So I think that this could be a close race, especially considering that Alaska is becoming more blue as, you know, climate change takes its toll on the state. That's also another thing to consider. In Arizona, we don't have any ratings changes. In California, oh yes, in California, we have a big ratings change down here. In Duncan Hunter's seat, that seat is now lean Republican. And that was because Duncan Hunter got indicted for um, cor corruption and all other kinds of nasty stuff. Well, not all other kinds of nasty stuff, but he got indicted and now no person who's been indicted, even in Wyoming and let alone Southern California, should be safe. And I moved the race accordingly. And let's go to Florida now. Florida, I'm gonna make a few interesting range changes, all in favor of the Republicans, actually. Mario Diaz Ballart moves into the likely column. Um, Carlos Corbello moves into the lean Republican column. And Ileana Ross Lithanen, um, I'm probably pronouncing that name wrong. That moves into the lean Democrat column. The reason for these stupid ratings changes is because Republicans, especially Republican Hispanics, have been performing very well in this part of the country. And I think those three ratings changes should reflect that. Basically, there's an upset that happened down here where like Miami-Dade mayor actually went to a non-Latino Democrat in a race against a Latino um, Republican. So I thought that, okay, maybe the the whole Republicans are losing their brand in these areas, and they might lose. But then I said, that seems like an outlier, looking at other races and looking at internal polls, especially in the 26th district, that appears to not be the case. And also, we're moving Charlie Crist into the safe column because he has a big money advantage. Um, I think we already did Georgia. Yes, I moved Karen Hendel to likely. In Illinois, we have a few ring changes. We're using moving Grandi Davis into the lean and also Randy Holt Gren into the lean. And basically, we're making those ratings changes. A lot of other people have made them, number one. And I just feel like after reassessing these races, that that is probably where they ought to be. Bear with me, I'm just like checking through the states. Oh, yes, Kansas. So, Kansas. Again, the Democrats did not put up a good candidate, and that race is now a toss-up race. Also, Kansas, the 4th District, is now likely Republican. Those two ratings changed in the 3rd and 4th District. This, the third one, it comes from the fact that the Democrat that probably would be a better fit for this district pulled off an upset. We, are, we, were, we were expecting it to be... A DSA, Democrat Socialist of America, Bernie Sanders endorsed candidate who probably wouldn't do too well in the incorporated suburbs, white collar suburbs and of Kansas City. He wouldn't be a good fit for this district, but we have someone who may be. I forget his her name, but she might do very well here. And then we have special election success in, of Democrats down here. Republicans held the special election in this same district that happened over a year ago, but just narrowly. And I feel that there's enough uncertainty here after all the hype about the candidate James Thompson that, you know, it puts a little bit of uncertainty into this race. In Kentucky, we're moving, that's Louisiana. In Kentucky, we are moving Andy Barr into the toss-up column. And chances are you know why, because internal polling, even by the Republicans, shows Amy McGrath in a very good position here to win. Going over to Maine, we are moving Bruce Poliquin into the toss-up category. 
Jared Golden appears to be holding his own in a lot of these um, areas. This is a heavily Obama district. It also is a heavily Trump district. But a lot of these areas that are swinging towards Trump are now going back to Democrats. And, you know, Jared Golden seems to be a good candidate. I already said that. And since what I'm doing there, in Massachusetts, while well, there's no ratings changes, I will note that in Michael Capuno, in the 7th district here, the district that I just turned likely, but it's not actually likely it's safe, considering there's no Republican running here. That district, there is a primary upset there. Um, and basically, a incumbent Democrat was actually defeated in the primary. So that is something to know, although since there was no Republican running there, I still consider the seat to be safe in the Democrat hands. Let's go over to Michigan, where we're moving Fred Upton into the safe column. His opponent, Long, um, Greg Longjohn, is not doing... When he, he's not a very strong candidate, or he might be he might be able to beat Fred Upton, except he's been in the House since 1987. And he's been keep getting reelected over and over and over again since 1987. And Long John does not appear to be the candidate that can really interrupt Upton's winning streak. He's on a roll, and Democrat here won't be able to stop him. In Minnesota, I'm making probably very controversial ratings change, removing... Minnesota's 8th district into the lean column for the Republicans. The reason I'm doing that is because Pete Strawberry appears to be a very strong candidate. And Donald, local source, even some Democrats are nervous about how people here, as opposed to the 1st district, people mm -hmm. up here still are big fans of Trump. And Pete Strawberry has raised a lot of money over his Democratic opponents. And he's raised more money, and that's not good. Duluth is the big Democrat base here. And it should be giving a lot of money to the Democrat candidate. So not having a lot of money raised, that's going to be a big problem where your only Democrat base probably is in Duluth. And if you're not getting people there to donate to you, then that's a big problem. And I think I now view Republicans as the favorites in the 8th district. Let's go to Missouri. Ann Wagner, I'm moving into the safe column. I mean, after reassessing the race, I mean, a lot of these, I'm just reassessing races and giving out different ratings because I'm not perfect every time. Sometimes I make a, rain, um, a race rating that I think, oh, why did I make that? That was a stupid um, rating to give. I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. I think that was a mistake to give. Um, Ann Wagner, not a safe um, Republican seat there. Let's go to the state of Nebraska. Nebraska, I am moving Don Bacon in line with the other forecasters into the lean column for the Republicans. I thought Kira Eastman might be able to, you know, generate some energy and perhaps counteract the Republican vote here, but I, he's, again, the money. It's all about the money, and it, she's not raising the money. I realize we missed one. Let's go to Iowa, where we're moving Rodney Blum into the Green Democrat column. So that's now the fifth Republican incumbent that we've rated as an underdog for re-election. Um, seven, if you count the House and Senate and governors. So we rate seven total GOP incumbents and one Democrat incumbent, Claire McCaskill, as underdogs to win re-election. And Rod Blum has just joined this list. He made some missteps when he like lashed out at the at the media and he is under investigation and things aren't going too well for him. He probably shouldn't be in this district anyway. He won a fluke in both 2014 and 2016. So we're moving that race into lean column. Nevada, the seat of Ruben Kihuen, that is safe. And the reason being is that the Republican has put up really terrible fundraising numbers. Crescent Hardy. He hasn't been doing so well on the money front. And, you know, in this district, it only voted for Clinton by a narrow margin, but that narrow margin with the Democrat advantage on the generic congressional ballot is going to be overextended to, like, like be a 10-point advantage. And this Crescent Hardy does not appear to be able to buck a GOP or a Dem wave here. In New Hampshire, we're moving Ann Custer into the likely column. 
And that is because of the strength of the race at the top of the ballot for the Republicans. That's Chris Sununu. Chris Sununu is doing very well in his governor's race. He's pulling around 50, while his Democrats are opponents are around 20, 25, 30. And, you know, it might just bring Custer down, but she's, she's not a sure thing. Going into New Jersey, I think. We have, oh, yeah, in New Jersey. We're running Tom MacArthur. That's now a lean Republican race. New polling here shows the race is competitive. This is an expensive district right here, and you need a very, very strong Democrat to unseat the wealthy MacArthur. And is Kim the right one to do that? We'll see. In the state of New York, we have some changes to make. So obviously Chris Collins, who was indicted, is now the likely in the likely column. We're also moving Elise Stefanik into the likely column as well. This race has generated some national media attention for the whole controversy over like recording the um Democrat candidate in this race saying that she wants gun control, but also she can't say that she wants gun control or else she lose in this gun owning, gun heavy district. And but then that was obtained kind of in a sketchy way and got some dirt on Stefanik. And I think there's enough uncertainty here to put this race into the likely column. Not not a sure thing. Another race that moves into the likely column, but the other way is Daniel Donovan. And if you want more information, read the Cook Political Report post about that. They basically lined out all the reasons why I'm moving this race to likely. The article is called 10 um, House Seats Move Most in Favor of the Democrats. That's why I moved that seat if you're interested in that. North Carolina. North Carolina's 9th District are moving into the lean Democrat column. And that can be... You can thank Democrat success in special elections for that. This is an open seat, and the Republican here is some real baggage. And he, he basically talked about, in one of his um, sermons, is Pastor Andy Harris is running here, in one of his sermons, he talked about overambitious women, and he also seems to be very, very conservative. While the Democrat here, Daniel McCready, could draw some ancestral Democrat vote, out here in the rural counties of the 9th District of North Carolina. And I think because of that and the Democrat success in special elections, Trump won here by about 10 points. I think that this is a pretty, it's leans in the Democrats column. George Holding, um, Richard Hutton, and George Holding, no, we're not moving that. We're moving Hudson to lean. And that's because of polling showing the race might be Then we go to Ohio, and we are moving that seat, Troy Balderson, to lean because he won the special election. In the state of Pennsylvania, we are moving the 6th district into the safe column because the, Democrat, the Republican here does not appear to be able to buck a GOP, anti-GOP wave. Also, Scott Perry... I know we're, we're going to hold off on that one. We're not going to move it to the leans yet. Mm. All right, in Texas, we are moving Pete Sessions into the lean column, or into the toss-up column. And I did that because a lot of inner-city and suburban Republicans are in close races, and Pete Sessions is also one of the more conservative members of the Senate, the House, excuse me, and I think he it should be in a toss-up race, and he is in a toss-up race, according to this. All right, so now we have a few more states left to go. Virginia, we are moving into the toss-up category, Virginia's second district, and that is because some unfortunate developments for Scott Taylor, a third-party candidate that took votes away from the Democrats. He's dropped out. Also, um... Aides to Scott Walker were found out to be criminals, and that's not going to look well on him. Also, Ralph Northam won his district, won that district when he ran for governor last year. Washington, this seat moves into the lean Democrat, and that seat moves to lean Republican. And I'm basing that off the poor top two primary results for 
the Republican Party in those districts. Finally, in Wisconsin, we are moving that seat to lean Republican. And that's because of Randy Bryce having a lot of baggage. There is some questions about law-abiding practices surrounding him. All right, those are all the ratings changes I have in the House of Representatives. If we zoom out, we can see that the House is now 207 Democrats, 200 Republicans, and 28 crucial toss-up races. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.